to motivate us to why we need MCP server, let's start by asking Claude, what is the latest version of PyTorch? It's clearly saying that as per my last update in October 2024, PyTorch 2.3 was the latest stable release. And it's also saying that since we are in April 2025, there could be a newer version that have been released after my knowledge cutoff. And if we go to the PyTorch website, we can see that indeed we have PyTorch 2.6.0. And there are some features which have been added here. For example, we've got the new performance related knob, which is torch.compile.setstands. Just to prove that Cloud is not aware of this one, I'm going to ask what is the use of torch.compiler.setstands in PyTorch? To my knowledge, through October 2024, there isn't a function called torch.compile.setstands in PyTorch. That's fair enough because the cutoff was well before the latest version, which is 2.6.0. So let's now build a MCP server, which is going to come here and see if we can provide the latest documentation of PyTorch so that Cloud is always aware of the latest version of PyTorch. So let's get started. So let's start with the installation. I've created a directory called code under which I'm going to do all the coding. So to do anything with MCP, Anthropic recommends that we use UV. In my personal experience, I found UV to be much faster than pip. So I'm going to stick with UV here. To install UV, they have given this command for Mac and Linux. I'm on a Mac machine, so I'm going to copy this and run this command. And it says everything is installed. So we can move on to the next step. As the next step, let's create a virtual environment using UV. So UV VNF is going to create a virtual environment and to activate it, it's asking us to source this one. So I'm literally going to just source it. We have this virtual environment called PyTorch doc and we are in this directory PyTorch doc. Let's see what we can do next. And the virtual environment is here. As we can see, the binary activate and everything else under .bn. Next, we need MCP actually. So if you're using pip, obviously we'll do pip install MCP. But with UE, they're saying that we can do UE add MCP CLI. So I'm going to run this command. That's done. That was pretty quick. And I'm also going to install HTTPX in order to deal with the documentation online. So let's install that too. Now we are all set with the installation and we can now go ahead with coding. So I'm going to start by renaming this hello.py, which I don't quite like. So I'm going to rename it to main.py. And after renaming, I'm first going to start out the imports. We're going to be using fast MCP from MCP server, but we can see that it's not recognizing it. So I'm going to do command shift p and then select the interpreter and i'm going to choose virtual environment so that has sorted everything out and we are now ready to use the virtual environment now what i'm going to do i'm going to define a function to get documentation using a query and that query is a string so to convert any function into a mcp tool all that we need to do is decorate it with mcp dot Tool. So it's not recognizing it because we haven't defined what MCP is. So MCP is basically fast MCP of documentation. Now it seems to get fine. We're going to write the code to get documentation here, which is a MCP tool. And we're going to edit this. One of the first things with defining any MCP tool is that we need to give a clear doc strings. This is for the LLM to understand what this tool exactly does. So I've given this, which is that search the latest documentation of any provided library using the query. Currently only supports PyTorch. And I've given the arguments as query, the query to search for and the library. I probably should include the library, which is also a string. And the result of executing this function is the text from the latest documentation. We can phrase the query like this, which is that, you know, the site is this and the query is this, and we need to search using this query. Uh, I haven't returned this search function. So I'm now going to write the search function. So define search. So in order to do the search, you're going to be using the serper, which is the easiest option I found out in order to search anything on the web. So I'm going to quickly walk you through how the serper does the search. So the URL for serper is serper.dev and we need to sign up first. So to sign up, I'm going to give all my details. So when we sign up first, it's asking us to verify the email account. So I'm going to verify it. So it's now verifying the email and email verification was successful. And there we go. We have it straight away. We can go to API keys. And I've got an API key, which I can copy and get going with Serpa. So if we come back to our code, we can see that we don't have any environment file in order to read the Serpa API key. So I'm going to add that. I'm just going to do .n file. 
and inside the dot n file i'm going to do server api key and i'm going to give my api key here we now obviously need dot n in order to load the environment variable so i've imported load n and i'm doing load n so that should import the server api key so to understand how serper works i've come back to serper.dev and i've gone to the playground link so under playground they have given this example in the drop down i've chosen python and i've chosen requests and post and we can see that we need to import the request we need to form the payload like this and pass the query and we'll get the response like this straight away the url is google.serpa.dev slash search and we're going to do exactly that in order to pass our query to the url and we're going to get the response which will be something like this so we can see that there's something called organic and under organic we can see that we are getting the results here and there's also related searches if that will be useful so everything under organic resembles exactly the same that we will get if we search for the term apple.inc for example if we go under google and if we search for apple inc we can see that apple united kingdom is written first and then comes the wiki page about apple inc Similarly, if we look at here, we can see that we can get all the site links at position one. And in position two, we've got the Wikipedia page. So that's how we will go about extracting the data from the internet using SERPA. Let's go ahead and do that now. So let's go ahead and add the SERPA URL, which is google.serpa.dev slash search. And then in the search, we are going to now use the code that we saw under SERPA which is this one we create a payload and then we create the header and finally send the request and then get the response the query is the query that we get from the user so we need to import json and this will be the query that we get location is fine i've added the header as well and you can see that i've provided the server api key and i'm creating a client and with the client i'm passing the search url the header the payload and i'm giving a timeout for the request as well and i'm getting the response and i'm then passing the response and returning as a json it's a simple search and in my MCP tool, I'm passing the query to the search function and I'm getting the result. So this is the format of the result that we will get from SERPA. For example, it has the search parameters. I've just searched for PyTorch documentation to find out what result we're getting. And we have organic and under organic, we can see the position one is all of this. And then in position two, we're getting the PyTorch.org URL. But the point is that under organic, under link, we only have the link to the page and we don't have all the data so we now need to get the data from this link and let's write the function for that so after fetching the result i'm doing a quick check on the result say checking that if no if there is nothing under organic then i'm going to say no search result for the query if we have the result then i'm going to iterate through the organic part and i'm going to get the data from url and i'm going to pass the link in the result but i haven't returned this function yet so i'm now going to write the function let's say assign data from url and i'm going to write this one now so the data from url function is going to open a client and then pass the link get the response and now we're going to use beautiful soup beautiful soup is going to convert the response into text so all that we do is pass the response text and then we will get it back and then say soup dot get text so that is going to return the text for us and if it's taking more than the timeout period then we're just going to say timeout error so that is a simple function to get the data from the url and we will use that one and pass the link and get the text and eventually our mcp tool or the server is going to return the text so that pretty much wraps up all the code that we need to write there's one last tweak that we need to do now that this file is a mcp server we need to stick in this one and say that my mcp.run transport is standard input output under the dunder name dunder main function and obviously we don't need the main function anymore and this converts this into a mcp server so we've got a couple of helper functions and we've got the mcp tool which has decorated the main function which is going to act as the mcp server so we're now ready to run this one so in order to run the mcp server that we have just created we need to say ue run main.py 
we can see that it's not printing out anything and it's very difficult to debug and we haven't put any print statements here so how do we go about debugging it how do we go about making sure that what we have developed is right so for that what we can do is kill this come out of it and clear and we can say npx model control protocol slash inspector uv run main.py. If you're running for the first time, it'll ask whether it needs to install the following package, which is model context protocol slash inspector. I'm going to say yes and I'm going to enter. So you're given OK to proceed and it's going to install that and it's going to give us a user interface where we can actually inspect what's going on. For example, it's saying now starting MCB inspector, proxy server listening to port and it's given a localhost link which we can open and find out what's going on. And this is the user interface that it has opened up. We can, we've got the environment variables, we've got the uh, configuration and we've got the connect button if you want to connect. We can connect to MCP service here to start inspecting and once we click on connect it will share the resources prompts and tools that are available if i click on list tools so it's got the uh, get documentation which we just created so if i select that it is asking for the query and the library parameters which are the input parameters for the mcp server i can give some value and i can run the tool here so in the query i'm going to say pytorch tensor and I'm going to run the query. We can see that it's given some error. So now we should go about debugging it or trying to fix it. So there were a couple of bugs that I encountered when I was writing this. One was with the documentation URL. So initially I provided it with HTTPS colon slash slash, but it doesn't like it. So I had to remove HTTPS and just provide the URL without that. And that was one of the major bugs. And this was a rookie mistake, which was that I wrote HTTPS with httpx.client without the brackets and that took a while to debug as well. It now seems to run. So if I do a control C, I've come out of it. Now I will do npx model context protocol slash inspector uv run main.py. It gives the URL that we need to open. So if we open the URL, it shows this link. I click on connect, go on the tools list. I come here, go on the tools and then I can see get documentation listed here. If we click on that, it asks for the parameters. Let's say if we just ask for tensor in the query and say PyTorch is the library, then I run. We can see that the result is success and we get a response, which is the PyTorch, PyTorch 2.6 documentation, which is very nice. We can now go ahead and ask whatever the query that we want with the latest documentation. So we are back in Cloud app. In order to add the new server that we have created, we go to Cloud settings and developer edit configuration that shows us the cloud desktop config.json we can right click open with any editor of your choice i've opened it with cursor and i'm going to edit that now if we open that we could see a empty mcp server something like this you could see a empty dictionary for the mcp service i've edited that and i've added this which is pytorch docs and and the command is uv because obviously we're using uv and for the arguments, I'm giving the directory argument and I'm passing the entire path to the code where we have actually coded the MCP server and the command run and the main.py, which is a Python file in which we wrote the MCP server. And it's as simple as that. So with that, I'm just going to save it and hopefully we should be able to use the new PyTorch documentation MCP that we have just created. When I tried to restart Claude in order to use the MCP, I saw these errors, which is like, you know, it's not able to find the PyTorch docs and it could not connect to the MCP server PyTorch docs. So I'm going to fix that. So the solution to this problem is that the command UE seems to be something new and it's not able to find that. So I found out where it is installed in my local machine. So I'm giving the entire path to UE rather than just mentioning UE. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to restart Cloud again and hopefully it should all run fine. I've now restarted the Cloud client and the errors have disappeared. And here we can see that there's a small MCP tool available. And if we click on that, it says get documentation. There you go. So that's the MCP server we wrote. And we can exactly see the comments that we wrote. Search the latest documentation for any provided library using the query. Currently only supports PyTorch and the arguments or query and the library, which is the PyTorch and it returns text, whatever we wrote for the comments in the MCP tool. So I'm going to try asking the question that we've tried out before. I'm going to ask the same question. What is the use, use of torch.compiler.setStance in PyTorch? 
let me search the PyTorch documentation and allow for this chat. So there you go. We now have the answer is a feature that allows you to dynamically control the behavior of torch.compile across different calls to your model without having to reapply torch.compile. Here's what you can do with torch.compiler.setStance and it gives the usage methods, available stances and key use cases important limitations and would you like me to explain any specific use case for torch.compiler.setStance? I would say no thank you. So that pretty much brings us to the end of this video about MCP servers, how we can readily use them in a MCP client like Claude. I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, take care.